Good morning and welcome to the final day of the US DGC Performance Edition. That's right, this is where it all comes down to. I know a lot of men all year long look forward to this day, this round, and spectators alike. Well, Bill Sharon in the lead right now, 10 down. John Key is not gonna let him run away. It's gonna be a battle all day long, and someone else, even as far back as that third car, could still win this thing. Well, you can't ever count out Dave Feldberg. He is grinding all week long, and if anybody has what it takes, he has got what it takes to handle the course, the spectators, the pressure. So it's anybody's game at this point. Well, the wind's up. It's Saturday afternoon. Oh, the drama is about to start. Before we get started, let's get over and take an abbreviated look at the course of the USDGC. We're at hole number 15, Liz, 539 feet, and we're at the very first obstacle you've got to achieve here. That's right, it's only 25 feet wide, it's double mandatory trees on either side, um, and it's it's pretty much a shoot. You wanna end up down there in the sunshine, but you have to make sure your disc follows a very specific path to get there. Well, you've gotta deal with the ceiling, you've gotta deal with the double mando. Let's go down now and show you what these guys deal with. There's a couple landing zones, and it's a little sketchy whether or not you can get to the green, depending on where you stop. Well, Liz, this is the optimal landing zone, and you can see we've got a nice clear look at the basket. But what you can't see is if you go just 15 to 20 feet further, let's take a look at what you're dealing with. Well, okay, now if you make it all the way down here and we're only about 20, 30 feet further than our early landing zone, look at the obstacles you're faced with from here. Now there's a couple of different lines, but still you have to make it through this line of trees to even approach or attempt a putt in that tricky green. Well, this is tough. Let's get over to the green now, as this is known as an open course, not this green. Let's go look at the most well-protected green on the course. Well, Liz, you can see this is a gnarly green. I mean, we can touch these trees around this basket, all in this area. There's no coming in over top. It is thick. This is a well-protected green. You bet you want to stay low as you're approaching here because I don't want to putt from this tree. I don't want to putt from that tree. I'd rather putt from right here. Well, you want to get close because, you know, a 15 or 20 foot putt can result in a reach out side arm, a big straddle, hole number 15, easily the most well-protected green at Winthrop Gold. Well, we have arrived down on the green of number 17 here at Winthrop Gold. It's a hard hole, Billy. It's 239 feet. It's 15 feet downhill. And I don't know if you see this giant lake behind us, but that is going to be a threat, too. Well, the hay bales, where we're standing, it, there's actually two pin placements on this hole. This is the pin placement for the second and the fourth round. And you can see the pin placement for the first and the third round. Either way, you must land in this island green on this side of the hay bales and on this side of the water. And there is about a 60 to 80 foot landing spot far in front of this. But again, you still have the challenge of even once you get there, you have a shot onto an island green. Well, the wind is always up on number 17. It is also one of the most famous holes in the world. Let's bring you down now and let you see one of the most famous greens at the USDGC.
example Liz, I mean, you can see the wind is always prevalent here at Winthrop. And what a beautiful track, one of the most famous courses on the planet. You're right, Billy, it's a really long course. It's a really technical course. I know a lot of players out here that do take chances will find out what it feels like to get a red flag. Well, this is number 18, and this is where you want to be putting last come Saturday afternoon, because this is where the winner of the 2011 USDGC Performance Edition will be crowned. Oh, what a beautiful track. If you've never had the opportunity to get to Winthrop, that's your fault. Bring you Fanny right on over here. It's one of the most beautiful pieces of property in the country. Now, let's get over where Liz was able to run down our two leaders before they teed off. Well, hello. This is moments, just moments before our final round tee time. Now, this is John Key. He's sitting in second place right now. He has had the lead at one point during this tournament. And John, I got to say congratulations. This Thank is you. USDGC and you are on the lead card. How are you feeling right now? Are you nervous, happy? Uh, nervous, just hoping to shoot a good round. Well, I know you actually seem really, really calm right now. Uh, what is your projected score? Uh, projected is 89. 89, do you feel like uh, you've been achieving that easily all week long? No, no, I had a bad round yesterday and a bad round on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I had heard some recent um, uh, rumor that maybe you had hurt your shoulder at some point? Mm -hmm. My original round that was rated, um, I played most of it left-handed. Your original round, um, because our stats show right. that you only have like two, rounds. two tournaments, yeah. two tournaments uh, that have been rated, So, and you played one of them left-handed. Most of it, yes. Wow. Well, I know players do have to uh, eventually adapt for their injuries and such, but now you're back, you're right-handed again. Yeah. Do you yeah. feel that that has given you an, an advantage somewhat over the field? Oh, yeah. The pot of gold in, in back in March when I qualified, that was, I mean, I was healthy then. So November of 09 is when I had surgery. Awesome. Well, we're glad to see you back, you know, returning to full health, and you are shooting some hot scores out there. Hopefully. <laughs> we're going to wish you some luck as you go into the final round here. We'll be Thank following you. you. Thanks a lot, John. Well, lucky us, we have been able to track down the leader, the current leader of the United States Disc Golf Championship right now. This is Bill Sharon. Now, you have a four-stroke lead over anyone that's coming to get you. How do you feel? I mean, you are leading the United States Disc Golf Championship. Well, it feels great, but obviously uh, there's 18 long holes of golf ahead, so... You know, I'm just going to try and take it one hole at a time, one throw at a time, and see what happens. Sure, you know, that's a really <laughs> down-to-earth, calm perspective that you've got going into the round. Uh, your playmates here, uh, Dana uh, Vici, excuse me, uh, also John Key, and who's the third person on your card? You know, I don't remember. I, John and I have played two rounds together, so I know him, but I, I don't know the other two guys. Well, that's kind of the nature of the USDGC this year. Everybody's yeah, meeting some different people, and... I tell you, it's going to be anybody's game out there. What's your projected score? 83. 83, and yeah. I mean, you've obviously been beating it all week long. Do you feel confident stepping into this round? Yeah, I mean, I know what I need to do on each hole, so it's just a matter of actually doing what I what I need to do, and it's a matter of approaching each shot with confidence, which is not easy, especially when there's a gallery, cameras, things that I've never actually had to deal with. Before. All of this stuff right now. But um, <laughs> but I mean, I'm glad I had the experience I had yesterday playing with John and uh, Dave Feldberg. That was nerve-wracking to say the least, but. I feel like it kind of helped a little bit for today at least. So. Sure, get yourself prepared for this moment. Well, we wish you the best of luck, Bill Sharon. Thank you. Well, Liz, they didn't seem too nervous, but it is the final round. That's not going to stay that way all day. I'm actually shocked that they feel so calm, Billy. I mean, they're both, they've never been in this position before, and they're just kind of cool as a cucumber. Well, now I know what you've been wanting to see. Here's some live action from the final day at the USDGC 2011. Well, this is the live action we promised them, Liz, and we're going to start out just where you're supposed to. Lead card, hole number one here, final round. That's right. There are four very excited guys to be playing on this card. We've got Bill Sharon, John Key, Patrick May, and Dana Vici. Bill's oh. sitting at 10 down with a four-stroke lead right now. That's right. And, you know, I just got a chance to talk to him, Billy, and he seems really calm and comfortable, and he knows what he has to do. He knows that the yellow ropes are an obstacle, and he's got to get them in between. Well, his projected score is an 83, while John Key's projected score is an 89. That's a small advantage for John. If he can just come out and put it together early, he could really put some pressure on Bill. You bet. And, you know, I talked to John, and he did say that maybe this was uh, or hinted, alluded to the fact that this may be a little bit unfair for him because, again, his only rated round, he threw predominantly left-handed. 
um, at that tournament. And his second tournament, he went back out right-handed. And I mean, it's just a really hard way to come up with a score for this young Loophole man. Loophole or not, that's what the numbers are. He's Absolutely. playing by the numbers, and uh, can you hold that against the guy? I tell you, he seems calm and ready to go. Well, Patrick May now with a projected 77 on the card, and then Dana Vici. And Dana Vici, he's projected 69, which is only one over par, so he's played great this That's week. That's right, and you know Dana. He has been coming to this event for years and years. He's a tournament director, and he knows the pressure of the top card, and I hope that he can just you know brush off that pressure and realize that he just has to beat his own score. Well, he might be the only guy in the lead group that really knows what it means for what he's about to tee off. So he may be the most nervous, even though he's at the bottom sitting three down and his projected score is 69. This is some lead card action from the final round of the USDGC 2011, the performance edition. Oh, well, here we go, Billy. This is a oh. hole number one here at the Winthrop Gold Course. And it, this hole is 21 feet down. They have got a tailwind that they're working with up there. And all morning long, I've been hearing people say, I just hit the Billy tree. <sighs> Thank you, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is Bill Sharon. He's at 10 down. He's in the lead. He's a nervous wreck, but boy, look at the wind really pick up as he steps up there. Well, he's got it in the air. Uh, it's If it stables out a little bit, he oh, might that, have a that worked out fine. He's going to be just down there below it. He's going to be putting back up. Now, that's a creative feet. way to get around the wind. All right, next up on the pad is John Key. Uh, a great player, a slightly ambidextrous player, too, as we're finding out. Let's see what he can do on this tee pad number one for the final round. Well, the 2011 USDGC, it's here for the take, and Bill Sharon, and John Key, these are the two men that are in position to take the trophy home. Shoot, the wind well, is just swirling down here. Down. If it gets down and rolls back, he might have a putt. A great shot, except he's going to have a headwind putt downhill. He's going to be above the basket. That's going to be tough. That's right. Next up is Patrick May. Patrick May working hard all week long, uh, really concentrated and Look at that, he's saying his <laughs> prayers before he starts this round. I saw that too. <laughs> he is absolutely pulling all the help he can. He needs a reverse skip here. I like the oh, shot, Oh, he's gonna Liz. be right on the other side of the bush, though. Oh, he gets no love. He hits and sticks up. He's gonna have the infamous David Feldberg putt from over there. Well, here we go, Dana. Dana knows all about the USDGC and every pressure that it can have. I'm gonna say out of these four men, this is the most nervous young man on this group. The most nervous, but also probably the most able to deal with those nerves. Well, no no doubt. I mean, he's more than just a golfer, like you say. He's a promoter. He's a TD. He's a mover and shaker in his area, and so this means everything to Dana. Oh my goodness, this wind is just swirling around down here. We're I, at 25 I don't, miles an hour easy now. You bet, and I don't see that much wind right up by them. They're protected by the shack a little bit, but as soon as they get past that first gate of trees, it's just bustling. Oh, that's trouble. Oh, he, not the billy tree, but close enough. Well, Dana Vici here making his way to his shot. He is the furthest out and by quite a bit, but he didn't leave himself a real tricky shot left. There's not that many obstacles from here to the bucket. Well, it's all about landing zone here. He wants to land at the right angle. If he comes in with too much hazard, he could just sort of pick edge and roll. It is a slanted That's green. right. I mean, the last thing he wants to do is throw it a little bit long and give himself a headwind putt. Well, he's looking for a tap in here with the way this wind is roaring out here. Well, looking for something to manage in this wind is oh, two different things. Ooh, that, that'll be all right. Ten footer, no problem for Dana. We'll let him come down as Patrick May now. He is stuck in the bush. He's an all-American disc golfer. And if you guys don't know, we have the collegiate championships. It's entering its third year. And Augusta State won two years ago. And that's the colors you see Patrick wearing. Well, he's going to have himself one tricky putt here, but uh, a, a, only an athlete can play at this level. Well, this is the Feldberg putt. You can see he's up over that bush. This is a beautiful, beautiful angle. Oh, yeah, he's, he's going to make sure he's out before he uh, goes ahead and makes his putt because he doesn't want to be the wind dummy on this putt, for sure. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be out. They're going to come down. Uh, everybody else is about 25 feet out. He is outside the circle. This is a downhill putt, but that wind is absolutely going to affect it. If he throws a hazard putt and exposes the, the flight plate, it's not going to go in. Well, yeah, and just talk about the pure raw pressure that he's got to be feeling from the USDGC. Ooh, good bid, though. Nice line. He just gets it up. Now Bill Sharon moving in aggressively here. He's coming right on down. I like this, Liz. He's going to pace it off. He, he is in control of his game today. He is. He made a very strong point of saying that he just has to remain in control today. And if he does that, he will walk away with this championship. Well, it's a tailwind, slightly elevated putt. It is it has not down, a gimme. Though. I 
seems like it's dying down for our leader, Bill Sharon. What a nerve wracking moment for this man. Oh, Kansas putt, great job by Bill Sharon. He gets himself a birdie on this hole. That could start him off, but right now, he's gotta keep up with him. Here's John Key. Yeah, and John Key, actually, if he makes this putt, Bill, that nets him an eagle. Well, he could pick up a stroke on Bill here. Oh, it's a tricky putt. He's on his knees, he's dealing with a headwind, and makes his putt eagle for Boy, John Key. That rose up just under the chest. Bill barely got in, but the two leaders doing exactly what they wanted to do and need to do, and Dana Vici with a big, big germ as a caddy there. That could be helpful later in the day. Absolutely, but you know, John Key with that one putt just advanced himself by two strokes over Bill Sharon, so now it's a two stroke deficit. Actually only one, because Bill birdied. He had a two on that hole. He netted himself a two, John netted a two, so Bill's gonna get a birdie, John's gonna get an eagle. I know the numbers are tough, and you guys at home are having problems too. We'll keep up with it. Let's get now around the course with some more live action. Well, Liz, we're gonna give them golf live action today. We were with the lead card on hole one, now we're gonna get over to the second card. We're at hole number three, another beautiful hole here, a little 389 feet downhill. That's right, and it's a huge elevation change, 36 feet down from tee pad to bucket, and there are some good players on this card. They're all relatively close in score as well. Well, Dave Felberg on this card, there's Ken Climo coming down the stairs, he had to pull out, he's walking around with his buddy, and here's David Felberg on the tee. All right, well, David Felberg is no stranger to this hole, no stranger to this tournament being a past winner. And he lays one up there. That is a little bit high. That's going to have to sit down immediately. Oh, this is going to be perfect, Liz. Oh, I don't know, Billy. That might just, oh, boy, that's just in by a foot. Never in danger, Liz. That was absolutely what David wanted to do. I can't believe David threw a sharp edge there. He generally throws a mid-range on this hole. Well, he knows that the wind is up by quite a bit right now. Next now, up on the pad is uh This is you Yuhu Rent. Rentaleo. That's right. Rentaleo. We're going to do our best with it, Liz. You bet. Either way, the young man is sitting uh, one over for the tournament, and he's playing great. He's on the second card. Well, he probably traveled the furthest to get here, 4,000 miles, and this right. has got to just hold its line. That That's a good looking absolutely shot. Solid. You might catch some cabbage on the right-hand side, but again, he stays on the outside and gives himself a putt. Well, he'll have a little headwind putt down here in the bowl. Oh boy, this man is excited to be playing. This is Charlie Coleman. He just won the amateur championships over at the IDGC. No doubt, Charlie is a great player. He is a predominantly sidearm player, and he's, he's a quick player, boy. He's gonna come right over our heads and land right that's next. That's going to in the woods if he's not careful. Bucket. Oh boy, he just skipped. I believe it looks that's like gonna he be OB, Liz. Uh, we've got the spotter running, and this is the well, moment when you, uh, you as a golfer just shudder to think, am I in or am I out? Oh, there's a red flag coming, and that's not a normal spotter. That's Mark Beasley. He's, this is his hole. This is his corner, and he's been here for years. A lot of the guys know him. This is the next of the last group he'll have to spot today is Charlie Coleman in on one out on two. Let's That's right. You know, get this in. Charlie is no stranger to the game. Uh, he played 13 tournaments just this year. Um, oh, he has again. sawed this off to absolutely try and keep it in bounds. Well, he is absolutely in bounds, and what a friendly kick. He didn't penetrate much into that shul. Uh, next on the pad, Kevin Tritton. Kevin getting in from Monday qualifying. And oh, yeah, the big man from Charlotte, and he has took advantage of all of that that he qualified on Monday. Oh, what a risky shot. Oh, he's left-handed, though, so... He's going to stay safe well short, but easily threeable from there. Well, he caught, caught a little something coming out, but... Let's get on down to the green as they make their way and see what they can do and see if any twos happen on card number two. Well, as we've made our way down onto the fairway here, Kevin choosing to play this a super safe, and he's actually the only one shooting his projected score all weekend long. Well, his projected score on this hole is a four, so if he can just get it nestled up there, take a three and get out of here, he's going to card a birdie. Oh, That's a good boy. looking shot. Geez, I thought that was almost going in the bucket. Well, that's left him about 12, 14 feet down below. That's where he wants to be. He's got a little bit of a struggle to deal with, but he's a solid sidearm player. We've heard from spectators that he will not try to throw back in unless it is absolutely necessary. You know, and he's uh, he's really been getting mentored and tutored a lot by Cam Todd. That's one of, uh, one of the guys he gets to play with a lot. And How showing. lucky is that guy? And you know, just to let everybody know, Cam Todd actually had to pull out of the tournament. Um, he did choose to not continue based on his uh, health of his foot. Well, he's in the hospital. He's got a staph infection and he's hurting. All right, let's check, in, check out the green. 
Oh boy, Dave Felberg, he looked at that OB line and said, wow, I'm safe. Well, once again, Dave Felberg here, he needs the card, he needs to birdie this too to get his projected par. That's right, this is, uh, I don't know if he's feeling much wind down there, but it's certainly windy out here. Oh, what pressure to just have to continue birdieing holes all day long and only get to count it as a par. Well, not many people can call themselves one of the highest rated golfers in the world, and we know why now. This is difficult. Now, Yuho moving in now, Rentalejo, and he had a great drive. He tickled three or four uh, uh, limbs there as he come in and just sitting down right where he wants to be with his head. Wind could cause him a problem. Well, the wind out there for everybody is going to be a problem today, especially on hole number five. Oh, it is picking up, and it generally happens that way when the lead cards go off. All right, it seems like uh, quite a long setup here. Maybe he's nervous. Maybe there's something behind him moving. Oh, he should have waited just maybe a second longer. It seemed no, like he was he distracted. He should have waited about 10 seconds earlier. He, uh, he just really grinded over that little putt. That was for a two. Yeah, and you know, he's given whoever's standing behind the basket distracted him there. He gave him an extra look. Charlie Coleman now to salvage his. Uh, he went Actually, OB. he was in on one, out on two. He's up on three. Or in on three, he's four. That was 45. Well, we are collecting a little gallery here for the second card as they make their way in the early part of the course. And I don't know if these other players are used to ever playing with a gallery. Well, David Felber is absolutely used to it. He's the one drawing the gallery. And now here's Kevin Tritton. This is for a three to net himself a birdie on this hole. That's right. Kevin Tritton making his way in on qualifying. Well, he's under par. Yuho going to tap out his three. And that's some live action from the second card here. We'll continue getting on around. We'll give you some live action throughout the day here from the final round of the 2011 USDGC, the performance edition. Well, the wind is up. It's definitely gonna take effect all day long. We're gonna take a break from live action now. We're gonna relive the most epic moment in the history of our sport, the 2003 USDGC. First time in tournament history, we've got ourselves a sudden death playoff. These guys will go back to the 18th tee. They'll play 18, 1, and 17 until it's all settled. We saw Barry have a miraculous yeah. Kenny does right there. Oh, these over. guys. Yeah. Right now it's another day at the office. These guys. See if he can put the pressure back on Ken. Yeah. Oh, he did. Just all the marbles are on the line. And you know your you know your only competitor is underneath the pin. That gives you one more thing to think about. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure Barry's gonna want to try and get this. No problem. He's still carrying his chair around, but I have a feeling that there ain't gonna be no more sitting. Back the whole 18. Fourth hole of this Sun Death playoff. In there, Got a so favorable a, skip. Barry? Yeah, they're both pretty close, but still, Barry knows that Ken made. Barry hit the last four in regulation and has birdied everything in overtime. Center cut. I mean, it's not just, he's not locking it down there. He is dissecting it. I mean, that is, that is just, it's just brilliance. I mean, that's the way it should be played. And the chipper spirit is just just deep into it, you know? Yeah, it's almost like they're having fun now, but they have got to be exhausted. I will bet that those, those drop in. No problem. No problem for the champs. You gotta see champs at this point, don't you? No, I, mean, they're both, I mean, they're both champions. Four in a and row. The Man, Barry, you like this hole? That's a tough putt. Yeah. Yeah. He's solid. Look at him with this pump action. He just knows he can do it. That's he's, confidence right he's there. He's been there so many times. He just knows he's got it. Very little cleanup work. There you go. These guys are completely in the zone because they go to the <laughs> what is the eighth, eighth, eighth hole. hole Let's go play on the Four perhaps. Yeah. There he goes ahead and. There with his typical straddle putt. Battles at home as we go back to 17 for the umpteenth time. The battle continues. It's the ninth round of this heavyweight duel. Looking flight. Oh. 
It's off the pin. Another solid ace. Unbelievable. Can again having to answer a perfect shot. See if it rattled them at all. Mm. Are you kidding? No. Yeah. Automatic. <laughs> yeah, bear. Hit on the back side of that rim and caromed off. The back side of the tray, rather, he could have easily carried to the water. You're only talking about 25 feet to the water. He could have easily found him right at 30 feet. He's got to nail it. You can't take it too lightly. Tough putt. Oh. It's going to be it. Just a hmm. bit high, and he would love to have that wow. back with the way these guys have been nailing putts all day long. Barry takes the title. Another birdie. These guys play 10 holes with the most incredible pressure we've ever seen, probably they've ever seen. They card 19 birdies and a par. Ken loses with a par on a hole that par is a great score. That is Thanks amazing. Thanks for waiting so long, guys. Barry Schultz, 2003 <laughs> USDGC <laughs> champion. I would like to bring up the second person to win both major championships in the same year. Uh, it's quite a feat. Uh, a great friend and probably one of the best champions that we'll probably ever see. Barry Schultz, your 2000. back home, but I really got to thank my girlfriend Amy and my cat Max for all their support and love for us here. Thank you. Oh, I mean, you want to talk drama. <laughs> Ten extra holes. Birdies galore from Ken Climo and Barry Schultz. Easily, in my opinion, the most epic moment in our sport. Truly amazing golf, Philly. And I, we didn't really get to see any of that amazing action that this USDGC, but it has been in the past. Well, now we were lucky enough to have the man himself give us a keen look at number 17. Here's Ken Climo letting you know just what you want to do when you get to that hole. Now we're at hole 17 at Winthrop Gold. As you can see, there's some water behind the basket, some hay bales short of the basket. It makes for a very daunting shot when you stand on this tee pad, knowing you have to get it in bounds, or you have to throw three from the pad, stroke and distance rule. Well, my train of thought is, if you can pan over to the right a little bit, you can see the, the green widens out a little bit on the right side. The, the hay bales are a little bit wider apart. There's maybe a 50 or 60 foot circle to land in on the other side of the, of, the, of the pin. And most players will opt to go to that side of the green because it's wider. It gives you a little more depth to throw into so you can throw your shot a little longer. And what you see most people doing is fluffing their shot and throwing short on this hole. Just short of the hay bales, hitting the hay bales, staying short. So. My real school of thumb is uh, make sure you get it to the right and make sure you throw it hard enough. If it's diving to the right and you're throwing it hard enough, usually it gets over the hay bales and leaves you a, about a 30 or 40 foot putt in this position. The pin will change for two rounds and it will be over to the left more. And that's a little bit harder to land it in. And it's almost a, a sucker pin, if you will, to try and land it in that area. So again, you want to throw it to the right and then you probably won't have a putt. You'll just have to lay it up and take your three. But a three on the sole doesn't hurt your scorecard. A seven or an eight, that really hurts. It's about a 249 foot hole. So you need to throw up a putter type disc or a mid range. And a lot of people like to sidearm this hole, which ends up cutting to the right over in that big area, which is a, a pretty good shot if you've got the sidearm. It looks like the ceiling is a little higher this year. Seems like it used to be a little lower. You used to throw something a little more penetrating, but looks like you can float it a little more this year. And uh, staying in bounds is imperative on this hole. Good luck to you out there. Well, now let's take a walk down to the green, see how it looks down there. Here we are about 60 to 75 feet off the tee pad, and there's a little safe area here. You can pitch out off your tee shot if you want to and throw really short. That way you have an easier shot into the bales. And I'm standing about 35 feet from the line, so you have almost 100 feet from the tee pad to the line down here to where you can pitch off the tee, and then hopefully navigate your second shot onto the green and make your putt for a three. It's another way to play the hole. It's uh, basically eliminating the deuce chance, but ensuring you won't make a very high number. It's pretty easy to make the, make the green from here. 
And uh, I know one top player in the world, Mr. Felber, he does this every time just to avoid having a high number on this hole. Well, here we are in the optimum landing spot if you're just playing for a safe three, trying to make a long deuce putt. You've, as you can see, you've probably got 50 or 60 foot of giant circle here to land in. It doesn't look that big from the tee, but when you come down here, you can really see that you've got some room here. Towards the back right corner of these bales, there's a good 70 feet from the front, front bale to the back bale. And as you can see on the other part of the green, there's probably only 30 or 40 feet from the, from the bale to the water. A lot less room to land it in distance-wise. This one you have almost twice the distance to land it in and twice the width. Now you're going to be giving up a short putt for a long putt, but you're going to be carting a three rather than a five or a six. Well, here we are at the right pin location. The left pin location is probably 25 feet to the left, and it's in a very, very shallow portion of the green. Not much room left, not much room long, not much room short. So it's really a sucker pin over here. You really shouldn't shoot at it. What you should shoot for is somewhere over here by this pin when it's in that pin. That way you'll have at least a deuce putt and pretty much safe three. And if you can put it here for that pin, then you should have a dunk in for this pin. If you want to play it a little safer, we talked about that earlier, but the trouble of this hole comes when you go towards the left side of this green. If you're not putting at the left side of this green, you're probably throwing a really tough shot towards the left side of this green. And I wish you good luck. And that was your keen close-up at hole number 17. I'm Ken Clymel, signing off. Well, I hope you all enjoyed a look, a keen look at hole 17 with Ken Climo. Now, let's go check out some more live action. Well, we are still out on the course. It's still undecided who's going to win this thing. This is the second card. Well, there is such a battle going on right now, and it's a battle between different people on different cards. So, you know, I don't even think that they realize they're in such a tight battle. Charlie Coleman right now is battling it out with... Um, Bill Sharon right now for second place. John Key is practically running away with the lead. He's got a very comfortable lead. And you know, all he has He's to do is just He's still got to play 17 out. though. Well, I mean, yeah, but he can throw his drive, what, uh, four Five. times out of, out of bounds and still walk away with it, so. Uh, I, hopefully he's got his good stat person running along with him telling him all this information and making him comfortable. Well, here is Juho Rintelejo, and uh, he is out of Europe. He's on the second card, started this round at plus one. We've seen him play some earlier. He was having a tough time, and suddenly, now that they're ready to tee, the wind has picked back up, Liz. Well, of course it has. This is Winthrop Gold. It does that here all day long. What a great line. He chose the straight line on this hole, and he... One release. Oh. He's in bounds, but that is every bit of 50 feet. And now right, to the no. tee. <laughs> Absolutely amazing what David has been able to do all weekend long. He is still in the mix somehow. Yeah, he right now he's sitting at fourth place overall, uh, and that's with a total of one down now. You know, that was a good tree, Liz. I, I'm telling you, if that didn't hit that tree, he was going out of bounds. He can still get up and down and get his easy three from there. Easy three. Now, what is his projected score here, Billy? Uh, his projected score on number 16 is a three. Okay, so that's not going to hurt him too bad. Now here's Kevin Tritton. All right, this hole sets up pretty good for a lefty, utilizing well, Kevin all this open Kevin has put a move on it here, here, Liz. Oh, yeah, that's got plenty of room to work, although it's going to be a little bit shorter than an uh, uh, easy birdie putt. But oh, again. that's the furthest one i ever seen Kevin throw. <laughs> now, here's our boy, Charlie Coleman, and Charlie's moved up to second place right now. Well, that's right, he's tied now. He's tied with Bill Sharon. He's going to get a release here. Oh, shoot, he's such a fast player. Well, he is going to be about 53 feet out. This is the second card on the 16th hole. It's coming down to the end. We still don't know who's going to be the winner. It looks like John Key has got it by the grips right now. We'll let him come down to us and finish out. And we're going to follow this group over to the infamous number 17. Well, Dave, he looks like he's playing pretty quick. He's playing extremely fast. You know, I think after all this time all weekend long, he's probably ready to just go home. Great upshot by Dave Felberg. It's just behind the base of the basket. Going to be about 12 to 15 feet, and he looks like the mental strain. He just needs to hold on for two more holes, Liz. That's it, Billy. And then he can, you know, immediately leave here his caddy, Casey. I tell you, it's been a long week for these two players. Well, here's okay. Charlie Coleman. That's right. He's still tied for uh, second place with Bill Sharon. Smart play by him, you know. I he's don't got think a he wanted gallery. to lay up. I think he just came out a little early. He's got a pretty decent hot putt. Oh, he actually put it out of turn there. Uh, yeah. He's a quick player. <laughs> he steps up, he goes. Not sure and... why. Hmm. Well, they could have told him he was out. They know he's anxious. They know he's quick. They've been playing together all day long. We've been out here about almost five hours now. 
That's right, now Kevin Trin is tied for fifth place with Spencer Wilkin, and they're sitting at even par through this entire event. This has got a chance. Oh, oh missed it just on the left side of the basket, but again, good speed, good height. Well, you hope moving in now. now. He's been warming up his putt for a couple of seconds now, and. Now this is for a two. That's right, now this group, unlike, unlike the leader, this group is really the group that has the gallery. Well, they have the stud, David Feldberg, in there. Oh, another good bid uh, by one of the players on this second card here. Well, Dave's going to move in now. He's uh, aggressively going to his lie. He just wants to tap his par out, get on over to 17. 17 is not a big problem for him. We know he's going to lay up and pitch on. He's not going to go for that green. You have no joke there. I mean, for anybody else, I'd call this a test or putt. But for Dave Feldberg, I expect it to go in. Oh, 100%. Dave looks like he's lost just about all of his enthusiasm, Liz. You know, I think the crowd has lost it at this point a little bit, too. All four players on this card are just going up and down, and it's it's really quite hard to keep up with the live scoring here, but we're doing the best that we can. Well, here's Yuho. This is 4-3. And Charlie Coleman right now tied for second place. Coming off a huge win last week. We're going to follow this group over to 17. This is live action from the final day at the USDGC. Well, we are back here once again. And I'll tell you, as a viewer, they just can't get enough of this whole list. Of course not. This is the most exciting hole here. There's elevation change. There is water right behind it. The tee is in the hardest position. And this is Saturday afternoon USDGC. Well, don't forget about uh, the hay bales that not only do you have to get over, but we saw one actually land on the hay bale yesterday. Never saw that. We're with the second card. There's a red flag on the basket. And Yuho on the tee, he is anxious. As soon as that group clears the green, you will see, and there it is, the green flag coming out. 249 feet, Liz. That's right, and it's such a tunnel shot. For all of you at home that cannot see this, right above the opening on the tee pad, there's actually a net guarding any top shelf shots. Well, this is a decent looking shot right here, Liz. He's turning it over. I think he's got enough to clear it. And he is in the safest part of the landing zone, and that's Yuho Lentalejo, and he is on the green. Now here's David. We know what David's going to yep, do. Yeah, Dave's going to lay up right side, just like always. Well done. Now that's the fourth time he's done that this week. He's oh, Charlie to Coleman! I, I don't even know what to say about him. He throws so quickly; it's just going to fly right out of his hand. Well, Charlie was in second just a minute ago, and now he's dropped back to third. Anything could happen. Oh, this, is this a, looks good, Billy. Oh, it's got to dig fast. Oh, and he jumps out over the backside, Liz. Just barely. I thought that that might have had a chance to stay in, but he had a little problem with this hole yesterday on his judgment coming up. That headwind is raging up off the water. You can see the flags flapping. All right, here comes another quick fire shot by Charlie Coleman. Oh, that's going to push the back edge again, Liz. That's He's right. going to have to bite. Have to dig hard. That one is safely on the green. So he's on the green three, putting four. Charlie's projected score is a four, so he's he's going to need to bang that putt. And now for the guy <laughs> who says he is having the week of his life. That's right, Kevin Trenton. He made his way in by qualifying. He's been around all week. He was the last guy to get in. Oh, look at that bubble. lefty shot. That's got to get up, Liz. That's got to oh, get up. Oh, it's just fine. Oh, he oh, hits no. the hay bales, Liz. Oh. And we've been pulling for Kevin. I, I mean, tell you, we have been pulling for Kevin. Well, he's a large guy, but he's got a lot of love. I mean, he's just a great human being. You bet and, every time I've seen him, a kind word, a smile, and just always really trying to stay positive. Well, he's the epitome of what the performance edition is about, Liz. Oh, that's going to have to... That uh, is trouble, Liz. That I'm... is big trouble. As she turns it over, he's in on one, he's out on two. He's a floater, line three. And now he'll be back at the tee, throwing... Five. Well, he was sitting alone in fourth Oh, and now place. he just lays up next to David Feldberg. Probably a wise idea, but uh, oh, let's make our way down with them now as they uh, try to get on the green. Well, Dave Feldberg looks like he is out on his own. No, actually, shot. it's Kevin Tritton. And oh, okay, yeah, you're absolutely right. Kevin's laying five, in on one, out on two, in on three, out on four, pitch to five. That's right, you know, this isn't the easiest layup shot. That's got to get out on this. That's, That's in right in the water. The Kevin Trin is probably. 
Oh, and he's already he, got another one loaded up. This is the he, well, worst thing you want to do. Actually, he, and I believe he knows that, he took a break, went back to his bag, took a second, and uh, hopefully recalculated. That was just an angry pickup. Well, again, not the easiest uh, shot even oh, from that's here. Short. This one's going to have that to find some way legs. Short. And we are seeing it right here. We're seeing the infamous 17 take a player out. Kevin was in the top five when he got to this hole, living You're his dream. Right. And right now, oh, he's waking up and it is not a dream anymore. That one's going to be okay, Liz. Yeah, it's got the height, it's got the fade. Oh, wow, that was still threatening the back edge of that green. All right, Dave Felberg, I expect him to just show these boys how it's done. Such a confident player, he knows he's good. Yeah, I believe he's gonna do the same thing he's done all week long. Pitch a little hyzer up there. That's gotta get up, Liz. Uh, up where, in the basket? Well, he's got it down pat. We're gonna get down to the green now. David laying two, I believe Kevin Tritton now laying 10. Well, I just seen uh, Charlie Coleman is out and you host said, do you mind if I go ahead and go? And Charlie said, no. Yeah, it seems like these guys are pretty uh, lenient on that. Uh, yeah, you want to just lay up? Yeah, he had no intention of uh, bringing it. The, where the basket is today in that left placement, Liz, you could take a putt from where these guys are, 45 to 50 feet. You could easily go OB long. Oh, you bet. This is OB long, OB left, OB right, I think, Billy. It's like a peninsula. Well, from Charlie Coleman view. putting for four. Oh, He's just laying yeah. up as well, going to take his five and move on. This is second card action from Saturday afternoon. The lead card's still out there, Liz. We don't know exactly who's gonna win, and oh, Big Kev making his way in, and I can see him shaking his head. He's trying to figure out what just happened. Oh, and what a lonely little place it is out on that green as you take your walk to your disc, just He's, thinking about what just happened. I've been playing uh, his projected golf actually all week long. He's about the only one that has shot his projected rating all week. Great well, putt by Kevin I'll Trenton. Tell you what, Way he to was, suck it up and make his putt and move on. He was just on center stage right there with everybody looking at him. The camera's rolling. That was no easy putt. His heart's broke right now, but he mustered up the strength to bang it in. Well, way to go, Kev. We're still pulling for you, brother. That's right. Now, as the other guys move in, Felberg's going to probably easy clean, easily clean up his three. Well, they're going over now. They're looking for... Uh, one and of Kevin's shots this. that just went in barely, and the big oh. man's gonna go down. He's gonna fish here on the whole Felberg, you know, saying, go ahead and get your disc, bro. Yeah, if you see it, you really wanna get in there and get it while it's still still floating. I mean, he's got that other one out there. Well, there's Felberg tapping his three in. Now Charlie Coleman moving around, tap his five. This is the second card, and we've got the lead card coming to us. We're gonna stay right here on 17. <laughs> We don't know what could happen. John Key's got the lead, but he could 10 cup it. Well, live action. We've still got a little more golf left, but there's really just so much that's happening out there, Billy. There's people moving from the third card up to the first card, back down to the fifth card. And it's every hole, it seems like, with all this stroke and distance OB penalties. People are taking a 13, and they're moving down. Other people are moving up. It's really hard to keep up with. It is not over <laughs> yet, is what we're trying to tell you. Now, the USDGC Rock Program, the partners, is one of the reasons that this event is able to sustain itself. We were lucky enough to run down Jason Hamby. Oh, he's a little bright. Here's a word with USDGC rock partner, Jason Hamby. Well, hello, I am standing here next to the very bright Jason Hamby. Now, Jason, you have been contributing to the USDGC partnership uh, rock program for years now. For years, yes. Years, and I mean, how much money have you put into this program? Oh, thousands of dollars, um, thousands of dollars probably every year. And this is your first time coming here to actually be a part of the event. Absolutely, first time. Um, when I heard about the, the format change, I couldn't pass it up. Um, <laughs> just in case something happens down the road, uh, this was my one and only opportunity to, to possibly uh, um, have an incredible week. And it is incredible. Yeah, now where are you coming from, Jason? Sacramento, California. All right, so I'm, maybe the weather there competes with the weather here, but how about the golf courses? How about Winthrop Gold? Uh, it is by far the hardest course I've ever played. <laughs> Um, uh, there's so much yellow here, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so as part of your first time experience, the format change, are you uh, your supporter in that because it allows you to play? 
absolutely. Um, yeah, the, the, the rock program and the edge program, uh, the way Jonathan has put everything together, uh, especially this year, is just phenomenal. Um, the, the changes that were made for the AMS, um, the, which are still the future of disc golf, uh, trying to get into, into pros, um, it's just incredible. And um, from the videos I've seen in the past, this does nothing from being here in person. So um, <laughs> if you ever get an opportunity to come down here, whether a spectator or player, you have to come down. It's incredible. Well, absolutely. I know you're not the only one that's been saying that all week long. And we want to know a little bit about more about your rock collection. I hear there's some sort of website that can inform them a little bit better. Yeah, I have uh, I buy championrocks.com as well as um, championrock.com to go for information. Uh, that's a great they have a great forum and price guide and stuff there. And uh, just check it out. Yep, you heard it from the man right there. This is Jason Hamby, first time experience in USDGC. Well, thank you very Thanks much. Thanks so much. Now that is a dedicated person to this sport. His first time ever being here and supporting it for all these years. Thousands of dollars invested in help and support this event. Just hope he had as big a week as he <laughs> wanted to have. Now that is a great program. And one of our favorite things to do, meet a new human. Here's the kicker, living loud, meet the players. Hi, I'm Jeremy Bird Grange. I'm from Austin, Texas, and hook em horns. Hey, how you doing? Uh, Wyatt Hardenberg, Bowling Green, Kentucky. First time here, couldn't be happier. I'm Daniel Voss from Orlando, Florida, and this is also my first time here. I'm ready to have some fun. Hi, my name's Brian Mace. I live in Arlington, Texas. I'm here for my 13th year of doing whatever we gotta do to make this happen. I'm Mom Dallas. I'm from Peoria, Illinois, and this is my third Greg O'Coin representing Massachusetts and NIFA land. Shout out to Team West Thompson and the rest of the NIFA guys and gals. Yeah, my name is Martin Manalo. I'm from Connecticut. My first time here, USDGC. And I would like to say hi to uh, my family and uh, my friends, Cranberry. Hi, I'm Alan Beaver. I'm one of the uh, marshals for the second year here at the USDGC. Uh, I played in the first five, been to all 12, This is my dog, Bear. This is our seventh year here. We work at Edge Village, and Bear also retrieves lost disc. He's got about four or 500 out during his uh, six US DGCs. And my name's Trey Williams. This is my first year in Charlotte, but this will be my third year at USDGC, and I'm gonna be a gopher doing anything they need me to do on Saturday. My name is uh, Kenny Glassman, PDJ number 30060. Just like shout out to Paragon Disc Golf and Discontinuum Disc Golf Club. Ray Hill, PDGA number 25183, uh, Joliet, Illinois. I'd like to shout out my beautiful daughters, Giovanna, Angelique, and my wonderful fiance. She's cooler than a polar bear toenails, Sarah. Love you. Jason Pohl, 19774, Romeoville, Illinois. Say hi to my wife, Desiree Pohl. It's been another great day out there meeting a bunch of new players, each one of them so unique, so different. Well, that's that's us. We are an eccentric crowd in the disc golf world. Now, I've got something special. Anybody that's ever ran a tournament, ever been a TD, oh, I'm about to make you jealous. Here's a conversation with Ross Porter, and I'm going to take you to the dream trailer for a TD. Well, I've got Ross Porter, part of the end of a team. Ross, this is a trailer. If you're a TD, let me just tell you, you wish you had this trailer. I'm seeing banners, Ross. I'm seeing rope, oh, yeah. the stakes. There's a, there's a whole course laying right there waiting oh, for yeah. the kids. I mean, 
what all is in this trailer? Oh, we had a little bit of everything. It was full to capacity, but we've got all the easy ups out. We had five miles of yellow rope that we put out. We've had uh, all our state banners we keep in the back. I mean, we've, everything that you can think of to build a course, to maintain a course, we have in this trailer right here. Well, we're gonna do our best. It's a little dark, but I'm gonna set Ross down and just give you an idea of some of the stuff located in the USDGC TD trailer. Oh, here we are in the UPS uh, trailer that they, they donated to us as part of a sponsorship. We had this thing full to capacity. We had 30 easy ups here, but uh, we had all our stakes here. This thing was, was full completely up with stakes, and we've got all these out. We got here's our travelers. We're setting up a temporary course for the kids for the Edge program. It'll be set up right out here later on today. Uh, of course, these are all our utensils. Got every kind of rake that you could think of: shovel, weed eater, anything that you need. Saw, chainsaws. Uh, we've got leaf blower, wheelbarrows. We put out uh, approximately 100 tons of mulch over the past month. Uh, it was donated uh, to, from the city of Rock Hill. Thank you very much. Of course, we had all our rope. We, we put them on these garden hose. Makes it easy to roll them up. Makes them easy to put them out. Of course, all that is out. We've got our generators. This will be used. Uh, I don't know what they use the generators for. <laughs> But uh, here's where we had all our state banners, you know, and then uh, we have some international banners. Uh, basket tops we changed out, put all new custom basket tops in, new poles. We're getting it geared up for the USDGC. Signing off from the UPS trailer, I'm Ross Porter. It's been my pleasure giving you the tour and uh, get out and throw some discs. Well. This is the last time we'll be sending them out, but I know what you want to see. You want to see the culmination of this event. So here's the last bit of live action on the final day from the USDGC Performance Edition. Well, Liz, we've got two holes left of the 2011 USDGC Performance Edition. And it looks like John Key has got his hands on the trophy, but he has still got to play hole number 17. Well, again, you know, we did the math earlier, Billy, and how many times is he able to still throw an OB on this hole and still walk away with it? He's got nine strokes to work with. Well, yeah, he, th this is true. Uh, he's right now, his projected score on this hole is a four. So we don't know if he's going to be laying up or if he's going to be going for it. But what I do know is that he has got his hands on the trophy, Bill Sharon, near him. That's right. He's in second place right now, uh, sitting five down for the tournament. Dana has fallen off a little bit. He's sitting fifth. And Patrick May, he suffered a, a pretty high number on the on the back stretch there. He's sitting in ninth place after moving uh, down from fourth after uh, just the first half of the round today. Well, lots of jockeying going on between the first three cards, but Dana Vici now moving to the tee. And he knows his tournament's about over. He came here because he wanted to win. He wanted to participate. He's been here in years past. He knows what this event means. And as we said, when it started, he was probably putting the most pressure on himself, even more than John or Bill. Oh, wow. He's playing it real close to the edge of the front there. That's a, that's a nail, nail biter all day. Well, okay, he's well, inbounds. He's laying one. He's going to have the layup shot. And now Patrick May to the tee. Patrick May looks like he's going to do the same thing. These guys have definitely learned a lesson this week on well, this hole. Well, it looks like they've all been watching Dave play the hole. The question well, I mean, is, here's can... John Key. It seems like he's going to lay up as well. John Key learning how to play golf this week. Well, laying up, giving himself an opportunity to get up and in there. Well, Bill Sharon, he has a forehand. I'd like to see somebody on the lead card at least attempt to get on the green. Bill is going to try it here with his forehand. He's in second place. He needs something crazy to happen. Well, it, I'm, I take that back. He is actually 10 strokes out of the lead. Uh, he did, John got another stroke on hole 16 on the field. Well, Bill looks like he's got plenty to get on, but he's going to have to get down. He's going to have to come to a quick stop. Nice job by Bill oh, Sharon. He's on edge. An attempt oh. in and sat down. <laughs> Bill Sharon, the only Finally. member of the lead group willing to go for the green. We're going to let them come on down now as they come to their pitch shots about 80 feet, maybe not even, and try to achieve the goal of getting on the green 17. Okay, as these guys determine who's out, who looks, threw 80 feet, like, 90 feet, or 100 feet. Looks like Patrick May is going to have his first day. And, you know, they've got a stiff right to left wind now. I mean, it's still not an easy shot from there, but 
Patrick May certainly accomplished it. It's a very technical shot. Well, Patrick's uh, projected par on this is a four, so if he can make this putt, it's actually going to be a birdie for him. That's right. John Key now, 10 stroke lead. This here is the biggest the shot US of his DGC. life. If he can just get this on the green, he's going to win. That's all he or has to do. Or the next one. Why not put in the bucket? Give us a show. Well, the crowd definitely like that shot out of John Key, their current leader. Well, John's going to gain another stroke on the field as his projected score is a four, and I'm going to tell you now, he's not going to miss that putt, Liz. Dana Vici now. Dana looking to throw this thing in, maybe try to give us some excitement here before we go home. I think Dana knows what this means. He's not going to make it. He wants to just get on that green. Oh, it's running, Liz. Oh! Great shot by Dana Vici. All right, let's move down to the green and see how these guys handle their putts. Well, we're just getting some story here from some players that uh, there was some controversy on hole 10. Well, you know, even though controversy or not, he's still 10 strokes out of the lead. Um, foot fault or no foot fault, uh, it's still a huge stroke deficit. Oh, I agree. There's Bill Sherman now. Just laying it Sharon, out. Bill Sharon, Billy. I've only called him Sherman a half a dozen times. All right, let's see you ho. No, actually, Can this is Patrick team. May moving in. You're right. Hardworking young man. All Sitting American in ninth conference. place right now, just shooting two over his projected for the weekend. Wobble, 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 get it out of the basket. It looks like Dana tells Bill. Yeah, go ahead, you're out. Bill gonna tap in and... All right, he's sitting in second place. It's the John Key Show. He could take his putter and just putt all the way up 18, I believe, and take the trophy home. Well, it'll be interesting to see which method he chooses, if he's gonna be showy or if he's gonna, um, you know, play his rating. Now, Dana, giving him a little love there. We'll move over now as we've got one hole left. We're going to bring it home. This is the United States Disc Golf Championship Performance Edition. Okay. Yeah, so far so good. <laughs> Finish strong, guys. Got one to go. Hey, appreciate it. All right, we are here. We're at the final hole, the culmination of the 2011 USDGC Performance Edition, and John Key, he's he got it. He's got it right now. Absolutely, he's got 10 strokes to work with uh, against any player. He's sitting 16 down his projected score. He has four eagles on the card. He's got a handful of birdies, hardly any bogeys. What um, a great day for him. Yep, and uh, sitting in second place right now, Bill Sharon. He w did have the lead at one point. Charlie Coleman is holding on to a solid third place. And actually, Feldberg has moved down to fifth place. Oh, he's uh, trying to hold on. Feldberg thinks he might be able to get him a bonus since this is a major. He does not want to fall out of the top five. Absolutely not. I mean, he doesn't want to fall out of the top five just based on his own ego, bonus or not. Oh, well, it's all about ego with these guys, and they've got to find something to motivate themselves. And Feldberg, he reached out, he found something to motivate himself, thinking he might be able to convince Anova to give him a bonus, and he is working it hard inside his own little head. Now, this is a beautiful hole. This is a tough finishing hole, 560 feet, Liz. They have really brought the ropes into a narrow edge up along the tree line. And then as you get to the green, it runs away down to the water. Well, not only that, Billy, this is the final card USDGC. A gallery is mounting. Every player is going to be done uh, by the time these guys tee off. So they've got the pressure of the entire tournament. Well, Watch just it. like every day this week, it's a little different. We'll have our top performer of the day, and they'll be awarding a check to Edge as the charity today. And then we'll have our top performer of the week, which right now is John Key. And John Key, I don't believe, has been the top performer of the day yet. Actually, he was. He was the first day with the uh, roll or uh, Rolling Thunder, I believe, um, being the top performer that day. Actually, that was David Felberg. It would have been John the next day. Special Olympics Special day. Special Olympics. Right. And again, just as we're throwing out props, Clayton Held was yesterday's top performer, benefiting Habitat for Humanity. Clayton had a great day. He's having a great day today as well. He's out of Wilmington. He had his own crew up here walking with him. So seeing a lot of people enjoying the USDGC. These guys now, uh, 
they're sort of holding up the green or the uh, fairway is good to go. And I believe it's Dana Vici's tee. Well, we have got the green flag from old man and mom. That's right, those guys working hard to take care of this hole all week. Probably some of the hardest working spotters out here as they've got to run on all sides of the green. Well, Dana Vici on the pad now. An Dana incredible has relished story. his whole week. I mean, he has really put it together. This is where he wanted to be when he left the house last week, Liz. Who wouldn't want to be here? This is the premier event disc golf and this is the premier course. And this is the premier group. Good shot by Dana right in the heart. Absolutely, well in control. He is a little short of the Mando, but we'll have no trouble satisfying it from that position. Well, this is the first time we've showed him 18, and if you've known the course, you can see the ropes have been brought over as far as 30 feet up next to that tree line. The uh, the red cherry tree that used to be there is gone that Kenny landed under during the battle three times. All right, Patrick May off the pad. Oh, that's gonna have to float over to the right a little bit more. It's probably that's gonna go OB. OB. Yep, you bet that is OB. He will re -tee. Well, Patrick May. Again, he had a little bit of suffering early on here. He knows he's out of the big battle for first place, but again, he'd like to finish in the top 10. Well, he had a game plan when he came out today. He just wanted to shoot his projected par. That was obvious early on as he was just laying up to stay safe. Well, this one looks much more safe, much more in control. He's gonna land right behind Dana. Well, here's the man. It's John Key. You're right, this is gonna be the winner of the United States Disc Golf Championship. And again, he's got a huge crowd. And <laughs> I think this crowd more than anything is just helping him play focused. Well, a great shot there from John. He is right in the heart. And now the man that had the lead when the day started, <laughs> you know, he went to bed last night thinking he was gonna be the 2011 champion, but Bill, Bill Sharon. He has had one tough day. It's been an up and All down right, he's battle. He's got spectators moving, but he's gonna nestle in just oh, oh no. mom puts a red, red flag. flag oh yep and she even shows a spectator he is not in by about three inches well bill now moving up the group almost wanting to say it was in but mom's never been wrong they know that mom has never been wrong you know she has got eyesight like an eagle and Bill just wanting to get this thing in. I mean, at this point, you just want to finish this hole without any damage. It's been such a long day. You are tired and mentally exhausted. I mean, Bill Sharon just has to hold his head together for this last couple hundred feet here, and he'll walk away with second place. Well, we're going to follow him up the fairway. This is the last hole, the 2011 USDGC Performance Edition, and this is the lead card. Well, here's our leader, John Key. Nothing is going to stand between him and a championship right now, I believe. Oh, that's safe. That's just a solid, smart shot. He just, he's just going to chip it on up there till he gets to the green, and he's going to be the 2011 USDGC champ. Dana Vici now moving in. That's right. He Actually, has... it's going to be Bill up on the far right, I believe, Bill Sharon. You know, his first one went OB. Well, I think he was just actually retrieving his OB shot there and maybe... Good call, Liz. He's, he's wanting to throw that girl again. All right, well, he's this got, is... he has a, it's a very tricky shot. It's a, he has to bend around the mandatory and then somehow fall back onto a runaway green. So this is a very tricky shot, especially if he tries to go I don't green. think he's trying to reach the green at all. I think, I think he's thinking about it. I think this is still a tricky shot because of the angle of the earth and the angle he's fixing to put the disc on. If he's not careful, he's gonna cut roll OB on the left side. I think he's going to fall. That's going to just fly OB left, Liz. Uh, Bill Sharon having a real tough time with this hole. But again, you know, <sighs> the champions here are the guys that are play better than uh, their normal rating. His rating is a 918. And can you imagine the pressure he's feeling? Oh, he has held on so long. And now that just needs to get down. He's That's going to be down safe. And stay down. Well, he was in on one, out on two, up there to three, in again, back out. He lays six now, Liz, and his hopes and dreams have been took away. Now it looks like Patrick May moving in. All right, that's a shot at the green, Billy. Oh, Patrick with a great shot as he skips it around. And can you hear the roar of the crowd here? We got a couple of golf claps. Now here's Dana Vici and Dana. You know, he, he wants to birdie this thing. He wants to go home, he wants to know, he, and he gave it a great effort all week long. 
He did. He has been a regular performer here, like we've said, all week long. And he's, he didn't start off at the top, but he's worked his way up there. He knows what he has to do here. Well, Dana might be the only player in this league group that we'll see here next year. That's a very, very good possibility. Um, although John Key, he's playing like a 960 oh, rated golfer. That is sawed off and that never had a chance, Liz. No, not at all. We're just waiting on word from the spotters right now. But I see Oh no, Dana's already got a flag. disc in his hand. He knew as soon as he let it go. Well, that one had a lot more turn on it. Much softer, less aggressive. Oh, what a tough little lie he's got there in the hill. We'll let him come on down. Lead card, just a few more shots to go. Well, Bill just wanting to, he's just ready to get back to the car, maybe to the hotel, these last few holes. Well, of course, you know, he's had probably the roughest set of holes his entire tournament just on the finish here. So well, he's mentally exhausted as well as physically. And here's our, our 2011 champ. That's it's, right. You know, he at this point probably has 11 or 12 strokes to work with. Um, he just has to work his way around that corner, get in the bucket and take home his trophy. Well, he's probably looking to get his projected par here. It's a five, and that's a good looking shot. He lays three there, Liz, and all he's got to do is get up and down for his projected par. Well, Dana here on his approach shot, now he just threw one out of bounds. He's got to pull it back together here with a gallery watching. Oh boy, that's got to slow down. It does. Oh, he got chipped very nicely. Yeah, those Viper and Putters sure do look like they slow down real fast when you want them to. Talk quiet. Well, Bill Sharon just, uh, he just wants to get up and down at this point. Up you and are, down, he just wants to get out of here, man. Yeah, you just, your energy's gone. And what's happened to him in the last hour and a half is just devastating to his golf mental game. Well, he can pull it together here, walk out of here with his shoulders held high. He did play excellently all week long. He, you can't take anything away from this young man. All right, that looks like a great shot. It's just got to fall inside the green. He's going to have the proverbial death putt before he goes home. <laughs> well, here's Patrick May. He just lays it right up under the bucket, and Patrick's going to get out of here. Glad that the stress is over. Yeah, you bet. Look at John Key there. Oh, John. Uh, John's going to a knee. You think he's going to go for this and just lay not. it up? Absolutely not. He's not going to use his putter to put it in the basket. He's a smart golfer, and he is admittedly a smart golfer. And he's trying, Liz. Well, it, he, he, I'm going to give him an A for effort. Now, here's Dana Vici moving around. Bill Sharon is going to be out first. He's got the proverbial death, but he just wants to go home, Liz. But before he can go home, He's got to deal with one more stress. From my, he's not going to deal with it all, Liz. He's just going to What a wise move by him. You know, it's been a long week for everybody. Everybody's having just one heck of a time here at Winthrop Gold. This is a gold level course. Well, I'm going to tell you now, Dana Vici, he is at the circle's edge. It's downhill. I don't know if this is going to go in. I got no gut feeling, but he's going to give it a good bit. I know that for sure. I think Dana's going to put it in. Nice pop by Dana Vici. Yeah, really and, that, up. and that's what the crowd wanted. They wanted somebody to bang one. Dana Vici does it for him. He moves out, and as tradition uh, warrants, John Key, they're not going to let him move in there to putt. We're going to let Patrick May finish out. We're going to go down. We're going to have a word with John Key. This is the 2011 USDGC, and it's over now. And the champion, John Key, we're fixing to find out how he feels. Well, it has been four long days. A winner has come to the top. His name is John Key, and we've got Billy Crump on him after he makes his final putt. Well, we are here with John Key, the champion from 2011, the performance edition. John, you look strained, man. I mean, it, <laughs> it has been a mental struggle all yes. day long. How, how were you able to run Bill down and actually just bury him here in the end? It was just trying to stay between the yellow ropes. The yellow ropes are mentally exhausting. They are, and, and I noticed that you took the opportunity, if you had it, to lay up, play safe, not try to draw any big numbers in. You ended up today on your projection with like three eagles and more than a handful of birdies, uh, playing well above what they had projected for you. 
Is it due to the practice? I mean, we know something about the left shoulder, the right shoulder, <laughs> however that works out. Your rating was what it was. You showed up, you brought your game, you practice, and you earned this title. Yeah. Uh, I just I, My round on Thursday was the highlight of my week. Um, and then obviously winning, of course, but shooting a 76 on a professional level course definitely gives me a level of respect for the guys that do come out here and shoot under par for four days straight. So. Well, this is your 2011 Performance Edition champion, John Key, looking to get in next year and see how he can handle against the big boys on the regular field. Congratulations, John. Thank you, Billy. Well, live action again for these guys, and hope you don't get bored of hole 17 as we've given them a lot of that, and carnage runs amok there. Well, I find that uh, watching it is a lot less boring than being on the hole and taking it. You know, it's we don't have to take those strokes the players do, and it's, it's kind of fun to watch hole 17. Well, we have, have finally reached the end, the culmination of the 2011 USDGC Performance Edition. And you can see behind us, they are awarding the top performer of the day, where they'll be getting uh, a check to Edge today as That's charity. right, it's the educational disc golf experience, and that is what is gonna thrive in our sport. It's teaching the young ones how to play, so we can keep playing the sport that we all love. Well, the story of the day, John Key coming back from four down to start the round to absolutely mash the field, end up winning by 10 plus strokes yeah, today. Yeah, he had a couple of eagles on his projected scorecard and a handful of birdies, you know, hardly any bogeys. And he just ran away with it. He knew that he was in the lead and he felt comfortably set on hole nine after he almost drained a fairway ace from 320 feet. He said from there he felt like he knew what he was doing. Well, and Bill Sharon coming out with the lead having some problems here and there, but it's just the pressure that mounted on Bill. The galleries, the media, David Feldberg in the second group who had a huge gallery, a little different today. The big gallery was with David Feldberg in the second card. You bet, you know, the big gallery today followed the superstars out there and Dave Feldberg put, always puts on a show, always aims to please, and Dave Feldberg was shooting hot all around this weekend. So for the spectators in the area, I think they were maybe here to see Dave Feldberg. For everybody at the tournament, they were here to see the winner. Well, Dave Feldberg, mustering through all four rounds, as well as David Wiggins. But some of our other top pros, not as fortunate, Ken Climo, not able to finish competing because of his elbow. Yussi Maresma, all the way over from Europe, having an injury problem. That's right, Cam Todd in the hospital at one point for one of his injuries. And Phil Arthur pulling out as well. I believe we had about maybe a little more than a handful of a thousand rated players. And well, out of the top six players uh, here, the top six rated players, actually four of them withdrew uh, before today. So such a huge change in the field this year at the USDGC. Well, that's going to be it for the 2011 USDGC Performance Edition. We certainly hope you've enjoyed the coverage and bringing you some of the action here. I'm Billy Crump. I'm Liz Carr. And he is Boz on the camera and we are Clash DVD.